Hello and welcome to yet again another episode of the Dark Match, where we discuss all the trials and tribulations that plague the wrestling world. This is the WWE Raw and SmackDown recap for the week ending December 17th, 2011. I am but one of four humble, humble hosts. Iron Bite Dash with me is... The fat one himself, Subric. I'm Christopher Says Dark Matches Mastodon on the Monotone. And I am No Leaf Clover. And we're going to delve back into the vault of my horrible Ultimate Warrior impression and go to what is Ultimate, Ultimate Warrior tweeting now? <coughs> Cold and dark, 16 degrees in my chin. Ten sets of full squats to do on the rack. Oh, how I love it when I fucking hate it. Do hard always. Yeah, you're right. That is an awful Ultimate Warrior impression. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to know was that was that a rejected? That line? was all. Ult- I think that was actually Ultimate Warrior when he's half drunk, or he's just uh, or giving he's- out a submission at Dark Horse Comics or something. I don't know. Yeah, I was about to say. I, that's I, I like, saw a lot of a lot of double speak in that double think. Uh, Raw. So yeah, today yeah. we are doing Raw and SmackDown and talking slightly about tribute to the troops. I don't think anybody here actually. Are we watched. really? Sort of. We're just going to mention it somewhere in the middle of the show for no reason. We're like TNA. We do that. Okay, we're going to yeah. get it out of the way now. Tribute to the troops. No. Happen. <laughs> Yes. It happened. The what truth happened. It was a feel-good show. Yay. Yeah, things happened on the on tribute to the troops that you know, you got to see Eve Torres being hugged by um, Big Show. Bow chicka wow wow. Yeah, bow chicka wow wow. <sighs> right now we have everyone's favorite. Maybe show of the year. It's the Slammy Awards. Yay! Wait, we're gonna talk about that fucking show? Yeah. Actually, we have to. Damn it! It's happen. three hours of somewhat torture. And I miss SmackDown. You sad, sad soul. To what begin the show, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. I mean, there. Yeah, I, it's not as bad as 2009. Yeah, I'll admit that there were there was a good moment or two. Like CM Punk's entire presentation. Hold on, we'll wait. We'll get to. No. We'll uh, wait. Wait. Hmm. The rest. When we of do this. get when we get when we get into the show. We will discuss. Firstly, though, Booker T and Hornswoggle, who has an afro, comes Ain't out. And can talk. Yeah, and he can talk now, and he talks like a he talks like a black dude. Because why not? Exactly. Yeah. Talks like a black dude. What does a yeah. black dude talk like? Uh, like, like the super, you, sir? The version of a black person. Like he talks. It he sounds like he's trying to talk in jive. Yeah, this was for um, Booker T and um, Hornswoggle are presenting the first Slammy, which is tell me I didn't just see that moment of the year. Hasn't Hornswoggle worn the afro before? Yes, he has. Oh yeah, in WrestleMania, that's when it was. Oh. That stupid segment. Um, so yeah, the nominees. I don't remember them. Me neither. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the winner is winner, the winner though. Jr. and is dancing. Yes, the greatest announcer of all time is being given an award, a fake award for shitty dancing and shaking that ass. Uh, I think uh. I just throw up in my mouth a little bit. Yeah, during the acceptance speech, JR says, I never thought I would win an award for getting jiggy with it. Mm. And you can obviously tell when he's saying those words that he's never, ever, ever even thought of the words get jiggy with it before. Well, maybe once when it, when it was around in, like, what, it was in 98, 99, and that's, that's pretty much... Oh, you're uh, thinking even earlier, 93, 94. No, that, the Will Smith song was around, like, yeah, 98, 99. When, when, when did Bill Smith have a recording career? It was about that. Pretty early. <laughs> but yes, during this whole thing, who would interrupt but Michael fucking Cole? Uh, see, this is the, this is the point. 
Why does no leaf no, uh, blue screens during this show, ladies and germs? This is this is the point at which I start to tune out of fucking the fucking Slammy Awards because I, I actually tried to watch the fucking St. Louis Rams versus Seattle Seahawks game. That's how I'm bad so I don't want to listen to Michael Cole, <laughs> especially about Michael Cole bitching. Yeah, well, he's not about anything. He does that the entire show. He mentions in the second hour about this stupid fucking segment. And you know what? What I've said on the forums, um, still, st- and what everybody has said about Michael Cole still stands, it's the fact that he's not announcing the show. He's not calling the show. He's just getting himself over. And it's yeah. really fucking annoying. I, I think the biggest bit of irony about this whole thing is just, is I think either yesterday or earlier today, JR had, uh, tweeted, well, it was either he tweeted or he said in his blog, someone had asked him what what an annou- what a wrestling announcer should do, and he said first and foremost, put the people in the ring over. And Michael Cole doesn't fucking do that. No, he can't do he, that. He's had and it's not- a career of not doing that. Yeah, and it's like it's one thing just to have like a five minute, maybe ten minute segment where he acts like a douchebag and is proven as such. It goes on for what, like oh, half hour or something? No, he it goes on for show. two shows. It's two shows of Michael Cole acting like this is that that. No, WWE I'm just talking about the segment tonight. Him. The segment itself was probably twenty five, thirty minutes, but he mentioned this multiple times throughout the rest of the show. There's no point. Basically, what happens is Cole challenges Jr. for his Slammy in another dance off. No, no, it was and, a rap off. Oh yeah, a rap no. off. And, and, and Michael Cole didn't even do it. Booker T said that Michael Cole's just jealous. So right now, so Jr. challenged Cole for no Booker challenged Cole for Jr. To a rap off. That's right. To a rap off, and neither of them know how to rap at all. They make mo- they make fucking modern rappers look this, good. This this opened. This show, this opened the fucking Slammy Awards. A three-hour raw, yeah. mind you. This is how you get um, both longtime fans and potential newcomers. This is how you turn them onto your show. Yeah, we're gonna fucking have two old crusty ass white dudes fake rap for what ten minutes well, at the beginning of the show. I one mean, of them they didn't rap. Or the other's middle aged. To be fair, but still, it's not not the right effect. To be fair, to be fair, both of them were terrible, but Jr. at least got the vote, the fan vote, so he kept his slamming. Well, it's vote. true. He but pretty he much said, just said, "I don't Michael give a shit." Cole, Michael Cole, you're a damn fool. Jerry Lawler beats you like a government mule. Something, 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 and then uh, you can kiss my ass. How do you like that? Yeah, that's basically it. And, even, uh, even, like, Michael Cole's even, like, they sort of break character in this. Like, Michael Cole's like, it's supposed to rhyme. And then J- JR asks him, it's supposed to rhyme? Cole's like, yeah. And then JR starts over. Yeah, it's 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 almost like watching Sabu botch a move and then get up and do it again. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I understand, like, all the times he just botches a move because he's fucking crazy. But it's, <laughs> it's another thing where it's like, oh, got to do that again. But what falls is... Possibly the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. The J.R. Rooney. Ah. Greater than the Spinner Rooney. Greater than the Horn uh, uh, Rooney. Greater even than the Kane Rooney. Well, the J.R. So Rooney. It was as you'd expect. J.R. falls to the ground and he starts uh, sort of flailing around. Yeah. He, he looked, I, I don't think it, it was painful. Tried. I think he was like, you know what, fuck this noise. Every goddamn time I come back here, I have to deal with this shit. Well, guys, we got we go to backstage, and we've got Mick Foley walking. Yay. He's up next to present the next Slammy. The award for the holy, insert various keyboard symbols here, moment, move of the year. With Ted DiBiase Sr. 
Yes, Ted DiBiase, who, who steals the, the cheap pop straight from Mick Foley's mouth. Yes. However, Mick Foley also money. steals the, uh, the, um, the million dollar wow. man catchphrase from, uh, from, uh, Ted DiBiase. So there's like, you know, a little play going on there. Mm. And the winner of this, the winner of it were, the winners of it were Mark Henry and Big Show for destroying the ring that never happened before and only happened at Vengeance 2011. Yeah, so that, spot has, that spot has never happened ever before. It was true. It was true. It was true. Yeah, exactly. yeah and they're going to protect it more than they do Chris Benoit's memory. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, um, Big Show comes down, he accepts the uh, the um, award, and uh, he goes down to the ring, and, you know what, I'm going to destroy my next appoint, uh, opponent. And who should come out? The Barrett Barrage. Yes, the Barrett Barrage commences tonight against you, Big Show. They go on to have a match that I saw uh, around March this year, when Wade Barrett didn't mean shit and he wasn't getting a push. Yeah. Yet... When he jobbed, when he jobbed to Big Show with, in 30 seconds at WrestleMania. Well, except when he when he did when he did it to then uh, the the chair shot wasn't recognized and Barrett just was taken down. Yeah. Um. This match. Um. This match happens, folks. Yeah. It, it's and, like a, it's like when you when you discount the commercial break that happened this and the amount of TV time this match had, it was probably a little over a minute. It had about as much TV time as a Divas match with entrances and for both for both Divas and um and an, and a promo from one of them. Yes, and a promo from one of them. It probably had the That's same sad. amount of time as a couple we, as it as the week before when Pin Up Strong came out. I hate that fucking name, by the way. When the Divas of Doom came out and they had their little vignette that got interrupted by the Chris Jericho promo. Spoilers! Yeah, see, I thought Pinup Strong was the move that they had. It's a dumb name. The Divas like, of Doom is so much better. It's like the Altitude yeah, Era and Air Boom. Yeah, the Altitude Era was. They are <laughs> not. They are not good at coming up with names anymore. Well, well, actually, they let. It's the, high they flying let the, frenzy. goddammit. it! They they let shut the, up! They it's, let uh, the, I'm they not even going to steal your catchphrase. They let the WWE Twitter followers pick that name. So the people that pick that name are the stupid ones. And yes, of course, Vince changes everything in the last. But uh, uh, all now we're we're gonna talk about something good right after this uh, Big Show Wade Barrett kind of match. Um, actually, no, no, no. Before we go on, because I actually did enjoy this match because it showed just how tough Big Show really is and how weak Wade Barrett is. Oh, Big Show's tough. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, what Big happens Show- is. Big is that Wade Barrett brings a chair into the ring, and he doesn't actually use it on Big Show. Big Show punches the chair out of his hands, out of Wade's hands. Wade runs out of the ring, and the ref calls for the bell. Winner by DQ, the Big Show, even though Wade didn't actually use the chair. Well, according to the results I, I'm reading, and by the way, this match was so brief, it really didn't impress anything on my memory. Wade could, did connect with the chair, and Big Show basically punched it out of his hand, and then then threw Wade Barrett out of the ring. Yeah, the Barrett barrage really continues to annoy. God, I hate that fucking phrase, Barrett barrage. We all know what exactly happen. is a Barrett barrage anyway. It's it's Wade Barrett running, uh, going on an undefeated streak with adamantium claws. That too. But yeah. Anyways, guys. Next up, we have. Let's talk about something fun. Um, of the of, 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 of chair. Everybody. Uh, it's the R O A D D O double G. Oh, right. you didn't know. You didn't know. What no is it? Oh, oh, somebody. somebody. Yeah. It's the. It's him. It's me. It's me. It's that D O double G. Of all the people to dig up, of all the people to go, hey, we need you to present something, Road Dog? Hey, hey, fuck you. Road Dog is awesome. 
Yes, he's awesome, but I, I wasn't even aware he was on the uh, WWE's radar still. Dude, Wesson still is over as fuck. I mean, it was a better idea to bring him in than to bring Brian Christopher in for a serious angle and have him dance on the ramp. Um, <laughs> well, don't forget, they also brought Bull Buchanan in. Yeah, and that, yeah, that too. Well, that actually was supposed to be funny, and of course, like, the, the whole thing was overworked with him, like, uh, pissing on John. John Cena, yeah, but... you ruined my life! No, no, uh, by I'm, the way, after I got fired, I got rabies. Therefore, it, it ended it, my wrestling career. Therefore, you ended my wrestling career, Cena. You suck. But for a postscript, before we get into the whole Road Dog appearance, he, he's, his Twitter name is now uh, WWE Road Dog. But he's probably going to be an agent. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. I think that, that has been confirmed. Yeah, he, he's a producer backstage now. Oh, people with pro work with John Morrison while he's recovering. Good for I really that. hope he does, but... Um... <laughs> So this is for Pipe Bomb Moment of the Year, and uh, do we have to say who wins it? Yes, we do. No. It's Punk. Yeah. He comes yeah. out with carrying a, a, a exact replica right down to the genitalia of John Laurinaitis. Yes. <laughs> yes. And also, don't forget, he's wor- the, the, the exact replica of John Laurinaitis is wearing a Dynamic Dudes t-shirt. Oh, Where did they I did find one of those? That. That's what I want to know. And a red blonde mullet. Yeah. And then he meant and then they show the best video package of the year. Yeah. It is a collection of Johnny Ace clips from WCW and Japan and other assorted WWE events that just base show him to be an absolute buffoon. They show the WXO promo. Yes. If, if you don't like it, get it. If you don't get it, Figure it out. Well, oh, I'm not sure what Kanye Ace was talking about there. That's so they, yeah. that and of course, uh, in true uh, true late '80s, early '90s uh, pastel neon, it's set to uh, "You Got a Touch" by Stan Bush. Yes, the song from the Transformers movie. The greatest song to celebrate a, a truck running down other giant robots with, and something that definitely looks like it was made by Punk if he had uh, if he had some video editing skills. <laughs> at, at the very end, at the very end of it, it says jo- it's John Laurinaitis Lifetime Achievement Award, and it has a bunch of cheesy neon graphics that are like totally and gnarly. radical, gnarly. It's like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles made this video. <laughs> it was great. So out next. Out and here's the sa- here's the one sad part though. When they come back to Punk after that segment, no one in the crowd is making a sound. That's the big thing about this show is that the crowd was completely dead the entire show except for a couple of assorted parts. Well, look how they fucking opened it. They pre- pro- it probably fatigued the hell out of them. It murdered the crowd. Wait, what? Oh right, the yeah. That probably killed him dead. I know I'd be fucking dead after that. Yeah. So they they have a um they had the punk Florinitis thing and it was absolutely perfect. They go to commercial, they come back. Who's out next but Lita? Yes. Evil is slamming awards. Exact and either it's T V or a lot of really good makeup because she looks exactly nothing like her mugshot, which makes her look like she's a crack fiend. (laughs) <laughs> that is one woman I, I'm going to say this I would not mind waking up to Lita without makeup on but that's just because I'm me that's Okay. a mean thing to say no we'll just leave that it is, at that that is very can I direct this can I the record I, I wouldn't mind waking up to Lita at all period so you know take that as you will go do your homework shut up you're not my dad. <laughs> All right, yeah. No, nobody right, wants well, to talk well, about Steve Sack and Dan, but, anymore, but pre- where we have Lita present an award to Kelly Kelly. That that metal sum it up. <sighs> Something happens with Beth and Talia. I mean, I'm sorry, sorry you two, but uh, WWE made me want to forget you. Um, not your. Yeah. F- um. So, the sexy tattooed brunette gives a slammy to a plastic Barbie doll, and two. Slightly buffier Barbie dolls come out, try to take that, uh, take the award away from the one Barbie doll, who <laughs> slaps the crap out of both of them and takes it back. Okay, that, that about sums that up. Yeah, 
And now we have uh, another Holy Shit Award presented by Santino Morella. And he has the Bella Twins with him. Blah, blah, blah. L. Triple H's tombstone on The Undertaker, Rock hitting the rock bottom on Cena. The walkout on Triple H and uh, CM Punk leaving with the title. Shocking. Does anyone else notice that? Was anyone huh? else like, wow, this happened? I mean, I mean, Undertaker kicking out of the fucking tombstone, yeah. Which is why I'm happy it won. But still. Spoiler warning. Yeah. But, um... But, this brings out Triple H. Who, just, who comes out to, an accept, who, to accept a Slammy Award after being incapac- incapacitated for weeks. Also... Why now? Oh, okay, here's, here's my thing. Remember how we were talking about the fucking stupid opening segment? Braun does that a lot when they had these three-hour shows, where they'll have something stupid and fucking not funny, open the fucking first hour of the show, and then the big sh- fucking shit happens. Why the fuck couldn't Triple H return on the first hour of the show? Because the first hour, in the minds of Vince and other people who are in charge, Kevin doesn't Dunn. really exist. To them. It's just something that they can... USA say, has said, hey, can we give you three hours for this show? They're like, fine, whatever. Kevin, Kevin well, Dunn decided that Triple H uh, coming back after being incapacitated for three weeks was more important. It wasn't part of their genre. Michael Cole and JR Dancing was. But at the same time, the first hour has always... Whenever they have these three-hour shows, you're right. They can just throw something together and it reeks of last-minuteness, really. Well, the, there's been reports. For, there's been reports for the last like three or four months that Raw's been they've been completely rewriting Raw throughout the day of the show and only just completing the script maybe half an hour before they go on. So you know what? If that's true, that's kind of stupid of them. But whatever. But well, that's how we. That's how we got the. That's how we got the the Raw where uh, Johnny Ace was in power. And, you know, all that stupid shit happened. But, yeah, uh, let's see. Triple H basically cuts, like, a similar promo to what he's been cutting ever since Kevin Nash fucked him over. And it's it's basically, you broke my heart, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to take you out this Sunday. Getting so here's, the, here's the weird thing about it, though. At the very beginning of it, he mentions, um, he mentions The Undertaker for, like, a 30 seconds. And he says that... What 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 the um what the WrestleMania match will be remembered for is the day the Undertaker's streak ended. Um, Paul, you tapped out. No, yeah. what he's talking about is the fact that the Undertaker could not, would not, uh, could not get out of the ring under his own power. No, basically, when he's saying the streak ended, he basically means Undertaker won't be able to challenge for another point. But in reality, he said he beat part- me. But- yeah. In oh. reality, he's going to get to 20, and then he's going to retire. Yeah. And uh, the end of the show might have a hint towards that. But fuck me. Um, this next segment I actually laughed at just for the, the sheer implications of it. And, and the next match blew the rest of the show out of the water along yeah, with the CM Punk segment. Um, and, and the ending, possibly. Yeah. David Otunga and Tony Atlas... They they come to present slam the slammy for trending star of the year, and before our tongue can get it a word word in edgewise, Tony Atlas starts doing the the Abraham Washington show laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the entire time, the entire time, David Otunga is like doing this really bad acting and be, of being interrupted. At near the very end, he's like, "Okay, what are you laughing at? Ah, I'm laughing at you." Ah. <laughs> it was so tight. It is stupid, stupid bow tie. Hat. It's like Pearl Clarence. Bay. It's like if Clarence Mason had less personality. <laughs> is that possible? But um, yeah. Basically, this this is one that they haven't decided on. Instead, what's going to happen is they're going to have a fatal four way, okay. and um, what's going to happen is the winner of this will be the first of the four nominees. To trend on Twitter, and the nominees. No, it was all... the, the winner of the match would be the winner of the Slammy. No, no, it was, the, it was it was whoever trended on Twitter first would be the uh, winner of the award. The winner of the match had nothing to do with it. But the nominees are 
Cody Rhodes, Daniel Bryan Danielson, Dolph, I was in the Spirit Squad Ziggler, and Zack Ryder. Ooh, 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 kid. Fuck. Yes. Two points about this. Excellent match. Number one, number two, a preview for Royal Rumble. This is what I expect. The Royal and, Rumble. and point num- point number three on this: half of this match was commercial breaks. Yeah, and yet it didn't seem like that. It, believe it or not, those com- those commercial uh, breaks really felt like they they were needed because the action was just yeah. Like, they actually pasted yeah. very well. Like the commercial breaks. Like, oh God, okay, give me a break. Give me a commercial break, John. I can't stand this anymore. And of course, like the last segment of it. Uh, after the after the last commercial break was just completely on fire. They were hitting all um, the spots with expert precision and and great speed. Yeah, this match was like what twenty uh, minutes. Uh, Dolph Ziggler and Zack Ryder tying up. We had Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes doing stuff, and then we had Dolph Ziggler and and Cody Rhodes actually take each other on at one point, and. That would be a great singles match. Yeah, but who's going to turn face first? That's true. Uh, um, maybe uh, Dolph. Yeah, I think Dolph. Would. I'd say Dolph because he'd get rid of if when he when he finally dumps Vicky, he's going to get the biggest fucking face reaction ever. Yeah, yeah. unless you're Mick Foley. But um, <laughs> the end for this or the match, Road Warriors. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the the end of this match it comes after twin superplexes that I think. We're supposed to be at the same time. And then we got a flurry. A flurry of finishers. We got uh, Dolph Ziggler getting hit with the Rough Rider. Zack Ryder getting hit with Crossroads. Cody Rhodes getting locked in the LaBelle lock. And then Daniel Bryan getting hit with the zigzag. And Dolph Ziggler... Right after, getting... This is right after Bryan breaks out of a sleeper hold. Yeah. <sighs> so, um, after the match, however... Zack Ryder does win the Slammy, and then Ziggler hits Zack with the zigzag. Yep. And steals his Slammy, because why yep. not? Yeah, he took it, first he took his HDMI cable, then he took Princess Leia. What's that? And then now he's taking his Slammy. What's next, Dolph? Are you going to steal the Internet Championship as well? Oh, dear I'm still God. Waiting, no. I'm still waiting for them no. to put that belt on TV. But yeah, hey, I have Michael it? Cole keeps bringing it up. So, well, there, was, have... there was a few. There was a few house shows where he had that the original Internet Championship. Maybe so, it's um, to carry it around. Is, uh, oh, is we'll Christian? Out next is Christian. Yeah, and he has, he has a, he has a bit of a theme for these Slammy Awards. Last year he came out in a sling. This year he comes out in crutches and a neck brace. Yep. <laughs> he was really? much funnier last year too. Yeah, and here's the thing with this. Well, firstly, I must say Christian's beard is awesome. Second, yes, awesome. secondly, this is this is total bullshit because the the award is Game Changer of the Year, and one of the well, firstly, one of the nominees is Edge retiring, which should immediately nullify everything else. Yeah, Second, that's the beat. Biggest game changer of ever. Yeah. ever. Se- yes. Secondly, nowhere in this, I think, was uh, CM Punk leaving money in the bank with the WWE Championship. Yeah, actually, I think it was one there, one. but that should have won. No, actually, it was it was uh, Del Rio beating CM Punk at SummerSlam. Oh, okay. And, okay, I can see that. And but, the, the winner of this is. The Rock challenging John Cena to a match at WrestleMania 20 fucking 8. Yeah. And John Cena comes out, and the crowd goes boo. Well, we don't know if the live crowd actually went boo. We just know it's, uh, you know, transmitted over our television sets. Yeah. It could, it could just... just yeah. They could pipe in booze for Cena like TNA does for every one of their heels. No, no, they they, they they can't really do that with a live show though. Oh, oh, that's right. So they were they were. They actually, can if you've got if you if you've got a a, a big enough delay. But uh, yes, yeah, Cena they, talks they about have, WrestleMania like, being seconds. the biggest shit ever, and he doesn't care about the fact that he's a main event versus Henry tonight. 
Hell, he does it. But however, he wants to. But you know, I can't. He can't accept this award. So here's the Rock. No Rock. Yay! Um. Oh well. You know what? You know what? I, I know. The Rock is going to be here live via satellite. No, no, no Rock. You know, this is kind of funny. You know, what? maybe we got a clip of him. Uh, no clip. You know, this is kind of funny. I mean, didn't Rock say he was never leaving? No, the thing was is that Cena's acting in this was just so hokey. It was. It was really hokey. So basically, he was acting like he was on, uh, like he was uh, starring in the movie Fred the movie. Oh well, no! Let's oh, not talk oh, more about head. that. Yeah, they're they're kind of hinting at not necessarily a heel turn, but just like who's who, what side is the crowd on? I don't know. I mean, I really the Hollywood Hogan match kind of turned the Rock into Hollywood Rock, so you never know. I don't care. I honestly will boo John Cena over the Rock because I don't care. You 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 cannot tell me who to cheer for. You just can't. Otherwise, you know, I'm just gonna go fuck it. I'm so okay, I'll, oh, I, I, as an, as annoyed as I was about them announcing this match like a year in advance. I am so much more fucking like just over it. And I'm, the only reason I want WrestleMania to come is so we don't have to fucking deal with. Oh, well, about well, then you obviously don't. Know, you don't obviously don't know about their plans for after WrestleMania, where they're probably going to do a multi-month series of these matches with Rock and Cena, ending at SummerSlam. Ah! And no leaf had just uh, blue screened. All right. So out up next is we have CM Punk and Randy Orton versus The Miz and Alberto Del Rio. Why Randy Orton? Because just just that. Because. Yeah. Because why not? <clears throat> it's like, hey, Randy, you doing anything? No. We're gonna put you in a tag match with Punk. Wasn't he trying to kill me at Russell? You know what? Fuck it. It's fine. Yeah, didn't he try to fucking hold my wife hostage? <clears throat> didn't he try to rape my wife? That's okay. I guess that's payback for me kick him, kicking him in the head and stripping the title from him effectively. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anyways. Um. Yeah. Let's let's do this. Yeah. Let's do this. And I gotta say, wasn't their best match. No, it's an it's another situation where R- Orton's kind of <laughs> distracted by his feud to really give a damn about the. I mean, it. The good thing was that it didn't happen during the match, but nonetheless, it. I mean, Orton, Orton was very preoccupied to begin with. Yeah, there's that. Um, again, this is not a very good match, it, but it basically, it did pretty much set up what's going to happen at TLC. Oh, and excuse but, me, it did during did happen during the match? Yes, it did. Um, uh, but it was at the end, so. Yeah. Um, ending comes when, um, uh, Punk gets hit with the skull-crushing finale after, um, Orton gets knocked off the table by the Barrett Barrage! Did you see that? This is the power of the Barrett Barrage! Yeah, it's, it's the anything. spinning side slam, which, thank Christ they're giving him that, him, that, they're, they're giving that to him as a finish, but it's still too late. Does he still use Wasteland? Yes. Hopefully not. Yes, he still uses Wasteland. That, that's it's a really just, anticlimactic finisher. Yeah, it is to the to the to the people he usually feuds with. To some of the people, good lord. Um, now, like if a, he did it, if yeah. he did the if he did Wasteland to like Big Show, it would be kind of believable because he did do it to Mark Henry. Now. He did do it to Mark Henry. Barely. Bill Jackson. Yeah. Well, he also fucked his shoulder when he did it to Mark Henry. Yeah. So yeah, but um, it doesn't really count. Next up, let's kill yourself after. This. After this match, well, actually, after Miz and Del Rio win, they beat the shit out of CM Punk, which basically confirms that Punk's going to win on Sunday. Yeah. They go but to Cooper the Show. Hey, no, no, no. They, Stop. Just for a second. Wait, the way they did this, they used the ladder in, for a cross arm breaker, and Miz gets on the mic. Next to Punk, Miz is probably the best stick man they've got. And. Just it's some me. of the comments from Miz to Punk got me and my wo- and um, and my fiance just all of Twitter Were you the next call her day. Your woman? Were you yeah, you almost woman? called her your woman. I oh, did. I am about to. I am gonna tell Joy. 
That is going to be our nickname for now. Whenever Iron Bite is here, we're going to be Iron Bite. Your woman is in the background. (laughs) She is going to kick your ass. You realize that, right? At least there will be physical contact. Anyways, um. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's sad. This basically berates Punk while he's in the, um, while, while he's in the cross arm breaker over the ladder. And, um,. Me and Joy, my fiance, my woman, my the love of my life. Um, He's gonna fuck a woman. Him. Yes, she probably she's is. She's standing right here. Oh yeah, she's, she's gonna, gonna kill, fucking him. kill you. She's got, a, she's got a murderous look in her eyes. Oh eye. no, Arrow, no. Yeah, me and my woman, we, so I we love like each other. An alibi. <laughs> but um, we we I mean, just some of the comments. It was like, God. Damn it, Miz. That that's that was so goddamn homosexual. It's not even. It wasn't even funny. No, oh, yeah, I, I said the same thing about his run with our truth. The the post that they did no, was, was this very. His run with John Morrison was gayer. Oh, got, oh yeah, I missed that. That's the thing. No, it's like, no, no the fact it was that more, it, it's like the, it was like the week before when like me and Del Rio we're gonna like I took John Morrison out and Punk's like you took him out. Like, did you see that new Twilight movie? Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Actually, they did. Um, Here's the but, thing. Um, you know, I don't understand why people. I don't understand why why there's people that are getting pissed off at CM Punk for making gay jokes. Because it's punk and he's awesome. But um, just the fact that Miz kept screaming, saying, "Oh, you're a fighter! You're a fighter!" It was just like I was waiting for the ball game. To it was Top Gun. We'll put it that way. <laughs> But uh, and, but uh, but Miz forgot how long a leg CM Punk really has, and he makes mention about you know Punk's pipe bomb blowing up in his face, blah blah blah. But it was it was actually a pretty good pro- post post match beatdown and promo, which pretty much proves that Alberto Del Rio does not need to be anywhere near the mic when you and, guys. And he's faking the accent also. But let's talk about the next Muppet Award. Yes, <laughs> up next we have. Vicky Guerrero. Excuse me. It's like we out. wanted we wanted Wolverine to win. We wanted the Muppets to win instead of Chocobo won. Wait, we'll get <laughs> no, to no, it. No, 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 Vicky no, no. comes no, out no, no. to present the award for WWE A Lister of the Year. Her co presentate her presentation partner is Goldust. And the winner of this fucking award, Snooki wants Chocobo. Smooch. She's an Oompa Loompa. She's an orange choker. She wants smurf smurf. But yeah, she 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 looks forty years old, and she she thanked everyone via satellite. Um, and even gave Zach Ryder well, a well, shot. Let's, let's, wait, no, let's no. think about this here. Did we want to see her live? No, no. see her at all. Well, don't forget, earlier this year they managed to get the crowd to to, give, to do a Snooky chant. That's true, but you know what? I wanted the Muppets. I wanted Wolverine. Hell, I would have even taken fucking No Show Jonah Hill. Not oh, so yeah, really. Oh, he didn't oh, really No Show. They just decided not to fucking put him on TV. Yeah, because they realized that he fucking sucks. It's Jonah fucking Hill. Jonah Hill is bad. like Jonah Hill is like the poor man's bad acting version of Seth Rogen. The funny <laughs> thing is, apparently, he's a huge wrestling fan. <laughs> ha! He's not as smart like us. But, um, Snooki gives Zack Ryder a shout out, which, in the minds of some, might actually lower Zack Ryder's appeal, knowing that. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but let's talk about Mark Henry uh, saying he's going to keep the title after TLC is over. Okay. They have been doing. With Mark Henry, they've and this is shown even more on SmackDown with what he does with Jack Swagger. They've been doing everything they possibly could since he stopped feuding with Randy Orton to completely get rid of his monster heelness and replace it with whiny bitch. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, this is a guy who could who who not even Randy Orton can keep down. Yet yeah. Big Show seems to only be able to beat him. Through hook, I mean, he can't even be, be, beat Big Show. Name me the last yes. time Mark Henry cleanly beat Big Show since Big Show's been back. Um, no, never. never. Yeah. And even then, 
And even then, this is the dude that took one of the sound technicians and threw him into a black abyss. Yeah, and he also injured Drew McIntyre indirectly. Yes. He also, all, he also He's also the dude that took one of the Usos and threw him into the audience. Yes. He's also the, the guy, guy that broke who, Daniel Bryan's ribs. This is the guy who put Big Show and Kane and the great Kali and that one guy with the Russian accent. I can't remember his name. Vladimir uh, Kali. That's the this is joke. The this is the dude that broke the ring with Big Show that only happened once at that one event, Vengeance 2011, never happened before ever in this WWE. This is the guy that I know it wasn't announced, but they'll probably retcon it, took out Harry Smith. Yes, this is the guy who killed Jerry Waller dead. This and is the guy who and shot and Jr. And this is the d- and now he's going to Jack Swagger for help. This we'll is the talk guy. About that when we hit SmackDown. Yeah, we'll get to that when we get to SmackDown. After this, after this, we go to a commercial, and then we have what I like to call a negative squash. A squash so bad they don't even start the match. Sheamus. Versus Jinder Mahal. When are they going to give up on this guy? Seriously. Yeah, he basically has uh, Zack Ryder's number one contendership for the for the WWE title from September 2010. He gets bro kicked. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> no one has to be in the fucking match. Is anybody upset that Jinder fucking lost? No one no. likes him. Like, they're, I have never... Very rarely do I see a fucking wrestler... That no one fucking likes. He's in the position that Drew McIntyre was in when he started in WWE. But even he's Drew McIntyre, I think some people are like, yeah, you can give him a chance. There's no one that's like, you know what, give Jinder a chance. He's not that bad. I think universally people think he fucking sucks. Because he does. He's boring, he's bland, he can't wrestle good. I mean... He was, he was in... He was in FCW for eight months before they brought him up to the main roster. And this is pretty much why I think Triple H has said, you know what, next time we bring somebody up, we better fucking have a direction to uh, take them in, otherwise we to get which, another Ginger Mahal. To which, uh, in, la- in the latest news, Seth Rollins is being brought up to work house shows, which is Woo! fucking awesome, number Yay. one. Number two, Dean Ambrose just uh, worked a match with uh, Daniel Bryan and lost. Yes, but don't forget also, he went, on, he went on Twitter did Seth Rollins and said, my last match in FCW is so-and-so, and and because WWE thinks everybody in the universe is on Twitter, they probably aren't going to put him on TV until after WrestleMania, which sucks. Well, you know what? If they fake him, they prepare him, they face him, they get him all nice and ready, we'll have a scrumptious Dean Ambrose meal put put before us every week, and I cannot believe how gay that, that sounded. If anything, okay. him, wow, being wow. Left off t- him being left off TV until after WrestleMania gives them more time to work on his character and more time for him to get ready. It's certainly going to be better than them, you know, bringing Mystico in and, and putting him on TV after two months of doing nothing. Yes, and look where he is uh, right now, those educated, broken feet. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah gen- so, yeah, Jinder got his, had his negative squash. <coughs> After, sorry about that, after that, they go to commercial, and who would be out to present Superstar of the Year? Rey Mysterio! Yeah, he, he's still in this company. I forget. Yes, hey, hey, hey. He, he had the WWE happened. title once. He had, he had a title reign shorter than Christian. Not as long as, I mean, longer than Dolph Ziggler, but shorter than Christian. Well, everybody has a reign longer than fucking Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. I've got no, a range no, no, no! You, actually, you forgot one dude that had a, a range shorter than him, Yokozuna. Yeah, that's but true. yeah, here's something of, that speaks miles and miles about this crowd. Rey Mysterio comes back after injury. He's pro- he's only probably one shot deal. He's probably not ready to come back on TV full time yet. But he comes back regardless. The crowd doesn't make any noise. They are dead silent. For Rey Mysterio. If you brought back... Here's the thing. This crowd, if you did a Raw on this crowd, if you resurrected Eddie Guerrero and put him on TV, they wouldn't make any noise. You know what? The Bella Twins could go to the middle of the ring, strip naked, 
and start having lesbian sex with one another, and the crowd would still be dead. That would be incest, you sick fuck. And no one in this room except No Leaf would have a problem with it. Exactly. Uh, it's, like that, it's like the Stalter critic said in his King, Kid in King Arthur's Court uh, review said, now a lot of you may think that the, uh, incest is a bad thing. No. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I mean, come on. It's, hmm. it's the Bella Twins. Yeah. You know, and for whatever lack of personality they have, god damn, how about them titties? Exactly. That's not, um, not that great. Um, so but, we're so progressive. We're so progressive. So Rey Mysterio comes out, presents Superstar of the Year, winner via fan votes. CM Punk, yay! But then, John Laurinaitis, Executive Vice President of Town Relations, Interim Raw General Manager, comes out. Because CM Punk cannot accept this award, I will accept it on CM Punk's behalf. Thank you, I am Mr. Excitement. There's a little Randy Sapp that went in there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I am in the I danger kind of zone. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that speaks for itself. Uh, 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 John Laurinaitis is kind of trolling. Um, but well, we I'm have sorry, Mark Henry John walking Laurinaitis backstage. We have, yeah, we have Mark Henry walking backstage, and then. January 2nd, 2012. We have, we have another, we have the third It Begins promo. And this one is, con- is even more confusing because now it's talking about she. Yeah, it's talking about the she? Of the girl. I two guesses: Four. Stephanie McMahon, Dixie Carter. <laughs> can you imagine? No, can you imagine a promo between John Laurinaitis and Dixie Carter? <laughs> I, I think they would. I think, Dixie, Dixie, I think my name is John Laurinaitis. I know who you are, Mister Laurinaitis. What are you doing here? I, I'm here to tell you that you're not allowed in my building tonight. Because I'm the executive vice president of Town Relations. Yes, I know. Interim Roger. I think, Roger, I think Roger. I think their negative personalities would open up a black hole. <laughs> Wait a second here. Wait a second. When when did Dixie Carter start sounding like Dende from Dragon Ball Z A Bridge? <laughs> <laughs> My name um, is Dende. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll kill you. I, I, didn't think my, I didn't think I didn't think my Johnny Ace impression would be that good though. Oh God! Well, it's pretty I'll easy to uh, impersonate someone who's had throat cancer. But yeah, but, hey. yeah, they have the It Begins promo, and everyone pretty much knows it's Chris Jericho, though. But they're no, but still see, the doing it. The thing is, red- it's the Undertaker, and if they just be like completely unsubtle, like they usually are with that uh, Sting promo last year, yeah, they're going to reveal it's the Undertaker by this week. Sting. It's Sting who's this? Well, yeah, that's to what it is. fair, the be- the first promo. Could have gone either way, Sting or Taker. The problem is, Sting went, no. And then went, okay, it's like, I don't want to be glorified. I, I don't want to like, be a part of the greatest, you know, what 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 would have been the easiest payday of my I'm life. I'm just saying this in retrospect, or rather about, prospect, but I'm going to go into a match with a druggie and fuck it. Yeah, I will, <laughs> say, that, I will say this about the It Begins promos. They are incredibly well put together. They're incredibly cryptic. They can go any way. And it's certainly better than when everyone found out that the Save Us promos back in 2007 were about Chris Jericho. And WWE, or whoever was in charge of it, just went fuck it and started making them so obviously for Chris Jericho. Well, the, thing, the thing is, with the, with the uh, Save Us promos, it, was way, there was, it, it went on way too long. And and it gave the internet way too much time for yeah. speculation. Yeah, now, they, they yeah, we're, we're still ahead. speculating. We're still yeah. speculating. Yeah, they but, still start. They they started these things way earlier than they did the the Save Us promos. Because the Save Us promos they started in early January. Not no, no fuck. Not early January. Early late September. Where the fuck did right. I come up with early January? I have no clue. Maybe because the, that the big reveal of the third coming of. Of Chris Jericho to feud with CM Punk over the fact that, that CM the, Punk basically that the, the uh, King of the World thing from Chris Jericho uh, is coming January second, two thousand twelve. Here's the thing, though, with how with with how eerie and creepy these promos are, how would they tie Chris Jericho's character into it? Guys, um, guys, you're all wrong. It's Mordecai. Fuck. Oh, wait, wait, if this is Mordecai, does that mean it's also the return 
of Ariel? I hope. No, that's Kevin Ford. It's the same they, guy. I know it's the same dude, but they, but you, nah, whatever. You know what? You know what? Nobody remembers the early ECW, uh, early WWE ECW. I so, I can't well, so don't forget, everyone, re- everyone remembers the ECW zombie. Well, duh, because that's hilarious. But nobody the remembers ECW uh, zombie and not and Macho Libre. <laughs> Anywho, um. So, so yeah, we that have all a... happened. It's awesome. Then we go back. We go go to commercial. We come back. John Cena versus Mark Henry starts, and, and then wait, literally wait, wait, wait. a minute and a half after the last commercial break, they start another commercial break. Yes. And let me explain this to everyone. I was not happy about the night, obviously beyond CM Punk's promo and the the fatal four way match. I seriously said to Arrow, I doubt anything big is going to happen. I'm going to stop watching now. <laughs> Boy, yeah, that, were you that wrong. That is exactly what happened to me, dude. Now, I was this, like, I'm there's gonna, nothing gonna, fucking gonna, happening. This is the scenario, everyone. They're doing the match. They're doing Cena versus Henry. Henry hits the World's Strongest Slam. Then they cut to the front of the ring where you can see the uh, the entrance ramp. And then... You just you start seeing fog coming out of the entrance ramp, and you're like, and, and when I saw that, I'm like, what that? in the world is that? And then the fire comes up, and after about ten seconds of darkness, Kane, the return of fucking Kane. Yes, and that's Kane bad. comes out, and he has a new attire. He has long hair again. He has a welder's mask on that makes him look like the Predator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he, looks he very comes. Unsettled. He comes like like he's never even lost a step. He comes yeah. down to the ring, get, does the whole grabs the top rope from the apron, climbs on over. Henry books it. Meanwhile, yeah. Cena's has, stumbling he around. Too. He has his and, whole love too. Yeah, and then Kane no look choke slam on Cena. Then he does the pyro again, and then he looks up. He takes off the he takes off the predator mask. And underneath his old mask. Well, not not quite. Not quite. So it's, it's, it's a it's a mixture of it's it's a mixture of old the half mask and a new design on it. Yes, and it looks kind of like Red Skull, which is not not it doesn't take anything away from it. It looks pretty damn creepy. It 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 does, and yeah. he has the goatee too, and he has he has the uh, the fake contact in one eye. And Again, but here's the return the, actually, of. My friend Justin Henry, who writes for a lot of wrestling websites, he put on Twitter, and this got put on uh, WWE.com in the uh, like the day after where they put all the, the tweets that happened through the show. They put he t- he tweeted out when Kane revealed the new mask. He says Kane actually looks evil again, as opposed to King Kong Bundy on Nutrisystem. Or just a, I'm King Kong Bundy for Nutrisystem. A strangely fit baby. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Just, just, oh, just, oh my god! Um, it was. In, in case you're wondering, I didn't like his promos from last year. I thought that they were fucking bullshit. <laughs> there will be vengeance. Oh, but um, again, hopefully he won't. Oh, by the, uh, two other things. One, hopefully won't, he won't have you know the stupid organ music underneath his promos again. Well, he, second, no, yeah, he has his old music. You forgot. Yeah, to he had. That's what I was. That's very, the second I was going to mention. He has a remix ancient. of his last theme. He has the orchestral thing that he had since like 2008, but it has guitar over again, which is playing his original theme. It's also got the slow chemical uh, 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 guitar riff as well. Really, it, I didn't notice that. Oh, oh you. Oh, it is. It is glorious. It is excellent. 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 So we have we have with us a pastiche cane and uh So the so the way this Raw went in terms of segment to segment is started horrendously, went to average, went to absolutely fucking hilarious, went to a long string of boring, went to awesome fucking match, went to another string of boring to face palming stuff, particularly Snooky and John Cena. Then they go to a cool average. match with the with the tag match, and then we have the awesome, awesome, awesome ending. Yeah, well, actually, it's so so really, really, I mean, it. I mean, when you really look at it, it's not. 
it wasn't a ter- terribly good Raw, but it, it was beyond. It was a little bit above average. Um, I mean, you had the return of Kane under a mask, certain- and he did a no look choke slam. Yeah, and it's certainly the best Slammy Awards that we've had ever. Yeah, I, I gotta say that. I mean, the fact. I mean, no Dennis Miller in sight. Thank yeah, but, the God. But at this point, I, I think I'm gonna have to get off before we talk about SmackDown. I will confess, like I said at the beginning, I missed it, and I have responsibilities at the moment. Okay. He just had well, to walk his dog. His, his it's a puppy. puppy. He's been in his cage for like three hours. I want to do something. You about don't that. know where your priorities lay, sir. Fine, I'll be right back. All right, so um, SmackDown coming Smackdown. off. SmackDown. Of well, actually, well, actually, we have to. We mentioned tribute to the troops earlier, but it oh, was yeah, a good yeah. show. Let's, let's mention a little bit of tribute to the troops. It was a. It was one of those feel What's good the, about feel yourself show. shows about hey, this is the troops. This is just about the troops, and even though Nickelback is here. Ah. Um, ah. Okay. Maybe we you should have what? had a maybe we should have had a petition to get rid of them like they did at the Detroit Lions game. You know what? To be <laughs> fair, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say tell you guys this. I've actually been listening to the new Nickelback album. Oh my uh, god! Well, you I'll, say it's uh, not good. If you say uh, it's not bad, I will fucking end your life. I swear to God, Iron Bite. I am willing well, to put up well, so much. I will, am willing to put up with so much bullshit from you, but I will not accept the fact that you think fucking Nickelback has an okay album. No. Hey, no. hey, hey, no, Lee. no, 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 no. Start in your flight because it's not bad. You whore. <laughs> I, 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 I will say this. I will say this as somebody who is just into all kinds of music. I am very just dead man. Damn it, Jinkus. <laughs> Run hey, in well, number one well, of the night. Run well, in number well, one of the Jinkus. night. At, what I was going to say was, as a fan of music in general, their very first album that they put out before anybody knew about them was okay. It yeah. was not anything like they sound now. It was actually, it was grunge. It was 90s grunge. Well, yeah, good I mean, for them. Let's move on. I, I don't want to talk about Nickelback anymore. Okay. Hold on, really quick, really quick. No! I will, state, I will state for the record that I do not hate Nickelback just to hate Nickelback as other people do. If I hear Photograph one more time <laughs> at one more school dance... Look I, at this photograph! I will Every rip someone's head... Laugh. I won't even decapitate someone. I will rip their head straight off their shoulders. <laughs> now we can... Uh-oh. Okay, so moving on to Tribute to the Troops... It was one of again. It was just a. It was just a nice. Um, it was one of your feel good, feel good shows of the of the of the year. It's just you know, hey, you know, there was certainly, there was certainly more wrestling in it than happened on Raw or SmackDown. But again, it was it was something for the troops. Were they over in Iraq? I couldn't. Oh, I, they I, were in. They were in the United States again. They stopped doing the overseas ones back in la, last year. Yeah, uh, they, were at, they were at Fort Bragg. This okay, was the first so, one that they. This was the first. The first one they did indoors. Yeah. Right. Um. You had. I mean. The, you had some great um shots of. Well, let's see. Um. You had a shot of who was it? Um. Kofi Kingston, CM Punk, Cody Rhodes. Alberto Del Rio and who was the chick? I know there was a Eve. Was it Kelly? Oh, Eve, walking, walking forward in preparations to do a skydive. Yeah, it was badass. Yeah. Um, also, I'm, don't like we mentioned earlier, we had Big Show hugging Eve. Yeah, Big Show hugging Eve because yeah, because he, he wasn't already hungry enough. <laughs> Big Show um, eats pretty Hispanic girl. Well, what do you think happened to Joy Giovanni all those years ago? Oh. Oh, now like that Joy. explains it. I thought she was just a completely untalented hat, but. She was don't, She was SmackDown's massage therapist. So yes, she gave happy ending. Um, so, moving on from that, let's, let's move on to SmackDown. Yes, we um, go to SmackDown, we have the big fireworks and all that. Our main event of the night is going to be Randy Orton and Zack Ryder versus Wade Barrett and Dolph Ziggler. 
Then Josh Matthews is in the ring. Oh, and by the way, something actually about Michael Cole, just to show that he is not good at all. It does not take him 30 seconds to bear, to try and bury somebody on the show because he, when he's announced, when he's introducing the main event, he goes, Randy Orton and the woo 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 goof Zack Ryder is ah! a fucking minute into the show to try and put someone down. Again, he's not, he, 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 this is the thing. If I were to run a storyline, and this is just me fantasizing, I would have somebody who can do a big power move start harassing Michael Cole every time he's on SmackDown. It's like on Raw, they get they get the bike and they go, hey, you know what I've also noticed? Michael Cole seems to be on an awful lot of shows. So I'm going to do something about that. Tune into SmackDown. And the second SmackDown goes on the air, the second Michael Cole, uh, um, Michael Cole opens his mouth, just to indicate, hey, I'm Michael Cole here. That wrestler's music uh, hits. He comes out, grabs Michael Cole, and puts him through the announce desk. And maybe, maybe, keeps... that, maybe that's maybe, that would actually be a cool thing for them to do with Brodus. Like they have somebody come out if they ever fucking debut Brodus. By the way, he didn't debut on Raw again. <laughs> What they're, they're, I've gotten actually past the point of not giving a shit about wh- Brodus debuting, because they're never going to fucking debut him. No. They're never going to. No, he, that, that, that ship has sailed. It's going, to be, it's going to be past next year's SummerSlam before they debut him. <laughs> Is anybody like, complaining? But, Does anyone really want to see Brodus, though? Yeah, <laughs> he's, a fucking, he's one of the few good monsters. Have you watched his Superstars matches? Oh, he's, I mean, he's, killing, he's a male Kong. He's killing bitches dead. He's actually he's actually more of a rhino than rhino. Yeah. Which, which he looks like a, he's fat Jesse Neal. Yeah, basically. Um, he, but keep going. It's like if Jesse Neal and King Hippo had a kid. <laughs> that is a uh, horrifying thought. But yeah, that would that would be a cool thing for them to do with Brodus. Actually, is they have somebody like they have like they they wanted to do managers again. They have somebody be a manager because I because he only I don't know if he's really any good with the microphone. So they have somebody be his manager. Like they come out on Raw and they test like Michael Cole has been running his mouth uh, for the last year, and I there I have somebody here. He's going to be on SmackDown, and he's going to teach Michael Cole a lesson. And then sometime during SmackDown, during that week's SmackDown, that person comes out again, and he introduces Brodus, who comes up from behind and eats fucking Michael Cole alive and puts him through the table and beats the shit out of him, and we don't have to fucking hear Michael Cole ever again, and Brodus would get over like that. He would be the biggest face. I would buy his T-shirt. That would, I would actually. I'm. I'm. I'm predicting this. The moment that they finally have somebody to completely kick the shit out of Michael Cole and possibly put him off TV for a little bit, that person is going to immediately get over. Because that's what yeah. happened with Alex Riley earlier this year. He beat the shit out of out of Miz, and he got cheered like crazy for that. Then the next week he comes out, and Michael Cole calls him a bastard. The the crowd gets fucking pissed. Alex Riley kicks the shit out of Michael Cole, and the cr- and the crowd is immediately on his side. Michael Cole and Vicky Guerrero are the two biggest skills the uh, WWE has. Oh, and by the way, Michael Cole has a third slammy, folks. Yeah. Uh, yes. But it's, it's like I've been saying, though, about both Vicky and Michael Cole. The fans hate them so much, Michael Cole more so in terms of just X-Pac heat than Vicky. I mean, I still have, I have X-Pac heat for both of them. But I've always said in terms of, of both Vicky and Michael Cole, they could save a burning bus full of children and still get booed. Yeah. Michael Cole especially, he has become that unlikable. But that's because of oversaturation. Vicky yeah. Guerrero and had to we have, no, we, have no leave for, we have no leave to get all pissed off about that for I us. Am, but we'll I, am, I, am, I am chill right now. I am playing Arkham okay. City, and I'm trying to ace this fucking... I'm awesome. playing Arkham City during the show, goddammit. No! Yeah, Fuck otherwise you. you get Mega Fighter to, to, to take your place. Mega Fighter, do not unmute your microphone. That was just a that was just an empty thread. We would so never after, have to play After military. that tangent, after Too late. After after that wonderful tangent that probably needs three tangent counters, we have Josh Matthews in the ring. He introduces Booker T, and book and Booker comes to the ring, and the week before, uh, Cody had uh, interfered 
while Booker was in, was entering, beats the shit out of him, then Booker comes back later in the show, beats the shit out of him during a match with Daniel Bryan. Matthews asked Booker T if he's ready to face Cody Rhodes at TLC. Booker asks the crowd if he looks ready. They give him a big cheer. Then he says he doesn't want to fight Rhodes. He didn't want to fight Rhodes, as a matter of fact. I was happy and moving, content moving on to the next stage of my career in the commentary booth with Josh, Ma- Josh Matthews to hell with Michael Cole. Yeah, that's basically it. My, uh, this whole segment, this, the, eventually Cody Rhodes comes out and, uh, you know, they job Jack back and forth. And, um, Cody says, oh, you know what? For the past two times, you've been interfering in my matches with, with Daniel Bryan. So, you know what? Um, I've got, you, I've, I've petitioned Teddy Long to make it right. I'm going to face Daniel Bryan. And if you get in the ring, I will. I will file a motion to have you suspended, and uh, yeah, blah blah blah. And, and your match, at, your match with me at TLC will be canceled. So it's like, okay, whatever, dog, you do and, that. And, action, and then Daniel Bryan comes out, and he still has tape around his ribs, even though it's been like two, three weeks since he got. Yeah. Don't hate on match. the guy for actually selling that. That type of yeah. selling doesn't happen in the WWE nearly enough. No, no, I think yeah, you, you, table you would think that after after three weeks. After three, two or three Rick weeks, injury sucked, dude. He still no, he still. I don't think he would need that much tape around. Like his entire lower half is nothing but white well, tape. As, as, I've never had him, but as I understand it, rib rib injuries like that never like completely fucking heal. Yeah, just ask Chris Jericho. I've I've seen Chris Jericho sell a rib injury for at least two months. I really have, but um. During yeah, this match so, with uh, Daniel Bryan versus Cody Rhodes, Michael Cole decides to, instead of calling the match, talk to Booker T about how much of a, a, of a selfish bastard he is. And yeah. I thought you said you didn't want to fight. I thought you said you wanted to be above that. Come on, Booker. What's going on? What's going on, Michael Cole? And the entire time that I, and the entire time I'm going, call the fucking match. Here, here, because I feel like people think we bag on Cole just. Because people like to bag on Cole. He no. doesn't call matches. He doesn't. He it it, because it gets to a point where it's very distracting from the overall show, and you don't want to listen to the show. That's the yeah. problem. The commentator yeah, shouldn't make you want to fucking not listen to the show. Yeah, Actually, I think I'll say this, and I'm, I might get a little bit of hate for it. Throughout this entire show... As, like the show as a whole, like there were there were moments where the commentary was fucking abysmal, but overall, through the show, I thought the commentary was a little bit more bearable, just because of Josh Matthews cutting in at times and actually calling the action. Yeah, I I really don't know where they're going with Michael Cole, but they need to either get there fast or get off the damn uh, road because I'm done. I am it's, it's, so fucking the, done with the my drop, The drop in commentary quality in the last five years is just amazing. Because at least five years ago, we still had J.R. and Lawler. We still had uh, we had Michael Cole and Taz for the first part of 2006. Then we had Michael Cole and JBL, which was a fantastic pairing. Yes. We yes, had, Michael. Uh, we also we had Joey Styles and Taz as well. And Joey Styles actually calls the matches. Joey yeah, Styles, ironically the, enough, why they hated him being on the commentary. Yeah, that's the whole reason for his uh, for his shoot interview. I'm like, we like, I am told to deliberately ignore the moves and holds so I can tell stories. But again, but yeah, like, the, 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 the fact of the matter is, this match this match was actually pretty nice if you could if you put the show on mute and just watch uh, Cody Rhodes and Daniel Bryan go go just put on a goddamn clinic. I mean, it was beautiful selling. It was beautiful psychology. And the ending. Oh, my God, the ending. The one time I actually cheered for a tight pull. Because Daniel Bryan ducks the the, uh, beautiful disaster, rolls up Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes, it looks like, I mean, grabs Daniel Bryan's trunks and and then rolls rolls through it. And it looks like he's going to do the whole, oh, I'm a heel, I'm going to hold him down. No. He pulls them back up for the crossroads. Yeah. It was excellent. It for the was. time that it got, it only got maybe five or five or six minutes, but it was great. Yeah. But you won't like this then because the the results sit here that we're reading off it only gives the match two stars. <sighs> what? 
damn it. But you. I think for that time, they could have at least given it another half star. Because yeah, for the I time that they it. got, it was excellent. Yeah. yeah and actually, uh, I'll say one last thing about the commentary. We had all those teams that I mentioned before. We also had CM Punk last year. And he's yeah, excellent. he did. And, uh, it's like that, that video of him on NXT3, like C- CM Punk's hour of inside jokes and obscure references. <laughs> um. So... We go to the back where uh, Alicia Fox is strutting back. Uh, and this you... fucking thing! <laughs> Fuck this! Let me explain to you people. They have been doing everything in their fucking power to make Beth Phoenix and, Ta- and Natalia look like fucking wimps. And they've been doing this for the last three or four months through them, Natalia and Beth Phoenix, who could probably eat the insides of these divas alive, losing in 30 seconds to fucking roll-ups. Natalia lost to Alicia fucking Fox to a fucking roll-up. That's somewhere, fucking bullshit. Somewhere Jengis is screaming, oh wait, Jengis is here. Hi, Jengis. You know what, Jengis actually... Jengis is possessing me through this. This you know is what? the part, no, no, no. Where, this no, no, is the part where the glass over my logo goes to splat. Because I'm fucking broken. Hey, hey, hold on a second. Jingus, Jingus, you there? Jingus, you, you live? He's you hear typing. Us? Yo. Okay. I'm here. What? We, we, we've been talking about this whole, about the whole role of thing. Can you give us some insight on this? Uh, it's bullshit. It means that they want to beat somebody without actually beating somebody. Okay. Uh, here's the even Wait. worse fucking part of this. After this ends, after this 30-second match, to use the term in incredibly fucking light ways, that, by the way, these results, they give the match a rating of N.A. <laughs> Alicia Fox gets on the microphone. She holds up one of Natalia's hair extensions. How that fell out is beyond me. Then she says, and I quote here, Natalia, you're so synthetic, it's pathetic, baby. So why don't you do everybody a favor and go gallop to the back and have yourself a good crybaby cry? Because, girl, you just got outfoxed, right? And I quote. Fuck this. This abomination of a current fucking Divas division is awful. This is why nobody takes women's wrestling seriously anymore, because they don't put any fucking effort into it, and the only two women in the company that they actually have any sort of fucking care about, and it's been said in reports that the only two divas in this entire fucking company that they actually think can work are the divas of Doom, Natalia and Beth Phoenix. They it's job them out in 30 it's seconds scroll on. Alicia Fox and fucking Kelly Kelly. Oh, I'm done. And, and Maria I'm- Menounos. And Maria Menounos, don't fucking remind me of that, please. A couple a couple of weeks ago, I did mention the fact that Alicia Fox has that new flipping leg drop finisher that is a lot safer than her old axe kick. She fucked it up. Yeah, she she doesn't do it right. She the 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 heel of her gigantic fucking platform boot smacks fucking Natalia right in the forehead. Uh, I thought it was in the face, and then she goes for the pin. She goes for After, the pin. Yeah. <sighs> In happier news, I'm watching Spectacular Spider-Man right now. I, I, I apparently, my, my screaming and yelling apparently pissed uh, Iron Bite's woman off. Oh, Seriously, no, let's of... stop calling her that. She's going to kill us. Iron, no, Bites, gonna... Iron Bite's lovely lady. There you go. Um, so, so, yeah, so we had special. that. We come back, um, we do we do a tribute to the troops video, and uh, we show the pipe bomb of the year, and uh, we get to see that lovely Johnny Ace tribute, and uh, then we have Jack Swagger, Mark Henry, and Vicky Guerrero. This is what I was mentioning earlier, because when I had mentioned earlier that they've done everything they possibly can to completely downplay or even get rid of entirely... Mark Henry's monster heel aspects and turn him into a whiny little bitch. That's yeah, what they, that's what they're doing here because Mark Henry, the dude who is fuck, who's fucking kills bitches dead, went to Jack Swagger for help getting rid of the Big Show. When you have to go to Jack fucking Swagger to need help to get rid of your enemies, 
reevaluate your career. Reevaluate your life, actually. Reevaluate the reason why you're world heavyweight champion. Three months ago, when they put this belt on him, two or three months ago, it, everything was looking awesome. They had rejuvenated life into Mark Henry. They made, they made people actually give a shit about fucking Mark Henry, former sexual chocolate. And they're completely pissing it away. And this is why people tune out. Because they don't know how to book people right. No, it's, it's, it's more or less the lines of they'll stumble onto something. And then just... They'll be lucky enough to stumble into something, and then somehow they'll still fuck it up. Exactly. Yeah. I'm surprised that I'm surprised that they have that. You know, they fucked up CM Punk's thing a few months ago when they brought Kevin Nash into it. But they've re- they've rebounded from that because it's go- it's oh, going to be awesome. really hard to get to get people to stop believing in Punk just because it's CM Punk. And yeah. the, the thing with Swagger here is that. Every time now that they mention Swagger on any of the shows, they always mention him as a former World Heavyweight Champion, just so that way you think he still has some kind of credibility. <laughs> you know, he, like, remember you know, this? It's like, I said early, it's, like, it's like I said earlier this year, when, he, when we were talking about him as the World Champion, the moment he won the World Title, all of Chris Jericho's negative energy and lack of charisma went into him just like that. And he became this walking shell of of a fucking. He became a corpse, basically. <laughs> he had no charisma. He had no personality. Like my name is Jack Swagger. I'm the world heavyweight champion. You will. Who cares? You're Jack you. Swagger. And now Mark Henry, the world's strongest man, the dude that fucking pinned Randy Orton clean twice. The dude who sent Kane. The Great Kali and the Big Show on to to the uh, to the vacation resort where they send all the injured WWE superstars for a couple of months. And don't that forget, don't forget Koslov. It was more than a couple of months with him. He, the guy, the man who who took who who made who made the WWE release of Vladimir Kozlov due to injuries. I know that's not the real reason, but go with go with me here. He's going to because Jack Swagger injured Big Show's um, uh, ankle last year, and not even really. They no, just, not, he, he didn't even really like injure him for a long time. If I remember, he had it for like a show, and then he was perfectly fine. I I, I don't understand what what Mark Henry's reasoning here, but we'll get into that in a second. Yes. Yes, we uh, actually we skipped over a match when we were talking about that. No, we haven't, that. actually. Next. No, we, no, you had mentioned the July 9th thing. There was the, the tag match before that. We have oh. Jimmy and Jay Uso, who have become, who are these two Samoan dudes who dance. Look, I'm going to say this, and, and, I, and I know the woman in the next room is going to disagree with me. I love the Uso's entrance. I do, too. So do I. It is, no, Leaf, do you have an opinion? About the Usos? Yeah, they're they're in, please. Um, why'd you guys ask me? Just to round out it. To round it out. Yeah. Um, I think it's fine. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't not bother me. Uh, at least it, like, at least it gives him the freaking character. Yeah, that's true. It, it's like a more low. It's it's a more low key kind of version of Samoa Joe's when whenever when Samoa Joe would enter with the Polynesian War Dancers. But god damn, he did. whenever they get, whenever I see that entrance, it's like, you know, I I, I suddenly feel like I need to go to war with somebody. <laughs> Seriously, but, yeah, but is it? Does anybody else find it interesting that only one of the Usos looks like Rikishi? Not really. No, like I, there's, I, don't, I keep forgetting which one it was. It's the more built one. It's the bigger one. That's probably what, the why. one who does. The one who doesn't do the singing or rapping or whatever during the entrance. That nary a clue at who does what. I, they're they're interchangeable, but yeah, they have on. they have they have pyro now. Yay. Yeah, they got pyro at the end of it. They're facing. Um, they're they're facing the epic tag team. Pun completely intended. Of 
Epico and Primo Cologne with um, Rosa Mendes. Oh my God! Wow! Wow! Oh, she, she took a lesson in hotness because yeah, oh. everyone here would hit that twice. You know what? You want to know something? You want to know something? My fiance would hit that. There she come out. I believe it. Awesome. <laughs> Would she, um, hit it, would she hit Here's the big question, though. Would she hit it along with you, or would you just be left out? He'd be left out. But, but he'd be watching. Well, you'd get a great show out of it. Yeah, no, exactly. No, no, I think she would leave you completely out. But yeah, Rosa Mendez has become a much hotter, less street hoary version of, uh, of um, Brazilian Ariel. Sir. No, not Rosita and Serena. Uh, Fog. What was her, what was Ariel's TNA name? Uh, Shirley Martinez. It's her it real Shirley name. Martinez. She's become she's become a hotter, less skanky looking version of of Shelly Martinez. Good lord! Just those gams and that top. Oh my god! She that has those super oh, no. super super tight small leather okay, daisy dudes. Okay, guys. Well, we got to talk oh, about this you, match, don't we? You, no leaf. You fawned over women in this show before. Well, yeah, That's but true. Mm-hmm. I would do nasty. Okay. See, this is why I said okay. Okay, so the match. We have a match actually to talk about. <laughs> really. This match, for the time it got, because they none of the matches on here really had any sort of decent time. But the match here, this was a good match. Yeah. I mean. Didn't they, start, really didn't they start Epico out as being uh, being Hunico's bitch? Yeah, and now he's back. Now he's dealing. You know what? I, now I've he's on SmackDown and Hunico's not. Yeah, Hunico's Hunico's on Superstars riding a bicycle. No, his his valet's riding a lower. I mean, his manager's riding a low rider bike. Yeah, Do, Donnie Mar, Donnie something. It's a uh, Donnie Marlowe. Donnie Marlowe. Whose son is he? I don't know. Because no, there was some, there was, there was a, there was a, a news thing I read that he was some older wrestler's son. Let me, let me. Well, I have it right. Um, I've actually said. Oh, uh, I say, and I Haku's say this son. Time. That's who, that's who uh, that dude is. He's that Meng's was, son. Yeah, he's Meng's son. Jesus Christ! Really? Huh. Wow. Interesting. Um. Okay. I've said this before, and I've said, and I'll say it again. Um, the WWE really needs to reach out to Carlito to try to get yeah. him back in, and that no, way we th- have just, all three of the colons. That won't happen. That won't happen as much as we wanted to because they completely destroyed Carlito's faith in the wrestling business. Mm, that's true, but think of it: we'll have Epico, Primo. Carlito and Honeyco all in one stable, and that no, stable will be known as the Great oh, O's. The Great O's. The Great O's. Then they then they bring in the Big O to feud with them. <laughs> or better yet, if this was TNA, they would actually have him join. Make him a make him an Italian, not an Italian. Make him an English Mexican. Oh, oh, and then, and then, and then they would have, uh, the, then they could bring in Common Rider O's, and he could join the, uh, uh, oh, stable, God. too. We're not doing this joke. <laughs> no! No Common Riders! Do not yeah, they had put Common Riders in match, TNA. For the time that this match had, it was good. This was, this seems like a match that you would, that maybe, like, they, they were gonna do on Superstars, but ran out of time and just threw it in on SmackDown. Hey, you know what? Whatever it gets, it gets uh, these guys exposure, and yeah. I it gets disagree. Us, it gets with, us uh, looking Rosa Mendez's ass. That's yeah, and you know what? I disagree yeah, with okay. that rating. I disagree with this one star rating. That was at least a two star. Yeah, it was. It was good for the time that it got, and plus, uh, Epico and Primo won, and they won Primo won with a backstabber. Yeah, and uh, we and the, and as they celebrate, we get to see Rosa Mendez shake her butt. Yes, but we, not shaking we, her could, ass we, shaking could, her we could uh, we could verbally jizz all over her tonight, but let's move on. Well, I want to say this before we move on. This just goes to further prove that anything TNA can do, WWE can do better. Yes. Yeah, 
This is how Next in America should go. This, and now, after watching this show, after listening to this show, somebody's going to go on the Dark Match page on TV Tropes and say everybody on this show is a pervert. <laughs> Hey, look. Well, hey, by the hey, way, I'm by not way, but go visit that page. I'm second thought, look at this page. So, yeah, they had a commercial break. They showed the July 9th, 010 stuff. 010, 2010. The fuck? They showed the stuff with Jack Swagger and Big Show and Lottie Dog. <laughs> I know that one. Uh, <laughs> sorry. It was no, hilarious. Was Salinas! Salinas! Swagger. That's the it, name! It, 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 Salinas was her TNA name. That's uh, Dixie Carter's uh, married name. Oh, my God. Her face is awful. Wait, what? <gasps> the picture oh, that, good Lord. Oh, her picture, and she has a vagina tattoo and gigantic nipples. <laughs> okay, enough. <laughs> okay, vagina well, tattoos are an immediate match. turn off, everyone. Um, who found that? Big show. Big Show versus Jack Swagger and Vicky Guerrero, who I'm pretty sure doesn't, in fact, have a vagina tattoo. <laughs> um, good segue. Um, and at, at, as the match comes uh, begins, out comes Mark Henry in street clothes. So he takes a chair and sits down at the bottom of the ramp. He goes, <gasps> chair match. There's a chair match. Um... Yeah, there's a chair match at TLC. Great. Um, uh, that this match happened, and ha- and af- as this match was starting, Mark Henry comes out and sits down in the middle of the ramp. Yeah, and they had this match, and it was meh. It they, was your classic swagger match. Yeah, it was a classic swagger match. He gets the shit kicked out of him. He loses. Someone needs the shit out of him after the match, and then and then Mark so, Henry takes it a step further by. Beating a camera guy with a chair. Actually, what I found kind of interestingly hilarious with this was that when he hit Jack Swagger with the chair, he hit him very gently, well, as gently as Mark Henry can do it. Then, when he hits the cameraman, he hits him as hard as he fucking hands, like he was Balls Mahoney swinging the chair. <laughs> and then uh, screams well, apparently, as he... Apparently, that cameraman done pissed him off. It, yeah, it was it was like when Shawn Michaels kicked the shit out of that cameraman at Bad Blood. Hey, you know what? Actually, I prefer the time when Shawn Michaels super kicked Little Susie uh, when he was working in the cafeteria. Yes. These tater tots <laughs> suck. <laughs> or the time when Shawn Michaels was I'm insane and started just randomly super kicking people <laughs> backstage. I what's just your, kicked what's your name? Me. My name is Stan. Kick. I just kicked Stan. <laughs> <laughs> then Triple H, after all this is happening, he's like, not sure if it's controversial, but it's funny. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so next up, we've got um, uh, Randy Orton interacting with Zack Ryder. This yeah, goes... Zack Ryder's, trying to, well. try, Zack Ryder's like... Zack Ryder's like... Uh, what did he say? It's like, yo, dude, are we on the same page? My best impression of the Orton Tron 9000 version 3.8. No. And, <laughs> and then Zack Ryder says, well, are we in the same book? Maybe. Oh, right. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> and then right, then Randy Orton, he tries to, Orton Tron 5000 version 3.8 BC beta. He tries to, he tries to put through his memory, da- his memory card, he tries to process an emotion, which kind of fails. <laughs> Yeah, we all know he, tries, he, tries look, he tries to look at Zack Ryder going woo woo with a look of dis- a mixture of disdain and what the fuck was that? Any kind of pales. It was like somebody swapped out Randy Orton's card with Dixie Carter's. <laughs> oh God, I'm dying. Over, I'm dying over here from that. Um. Yes, chopper oh. alert! Chopper alert, everyone! Oh. He- Keith Slater's in the ring. Well, remember when I said I didn't see this episode of SmackDown? Well, I Stop didn't. the fucking but, presses. But the fact of the he matter, sucks. the thing I remember the most about this is the spoilers. Heath Slater beat Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase won with the Dream Street. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of funny. Um, and, and someone's response. I, I'm sorry, someone from the forums. I wish I could remember who it was. So Heath Slater, so Heath Slater jobs by winning now. 
Oh, <laughs> oh God. Um, you know what? You know what? Um, they show more footage of – they're really trying to uh, uh, get over the fact that Ted DiBiase connects with the fans with this whole DiBiase posse thing. And Michael Cole immediately takes a shit all over it. Yeah. It's like, it's like, like, they, like show, they show more footage. At, firstly, they show more footage of the DiBiase posse than this match took place. Secondly, yeah. secondly they're showing the DiBiase posse footage, and, like, he's interacting with the fans, and he's signing stuff, and he's, si- he's posing for pictures, and he's standing with a bunch of, cra- a bunch of fans who are in Nexus shirts for some reason. Seriously, know. like, two or three of the people in that crowd had a Nexus shirt. They've... So he's standing there, he's posing with the fans. Michael Cole's like, you know, the only reason why he is, the only reason why the fans are liking him is because he gives out free stuff when he's in the, when he's with them. He's a fucking, he, he bribes them. So, if someone gave me free fucking stuff, I'd want it. Dude, yes. oh, did the he fact of the matter wait, is, actually, okay. did, did someone, did he shave his mustache? Yes, he did. Fuck, I, I like the porno stash. First off, first off, let me let me say something right here about this whole DBIC posse. You've got a guy who travels, what would you say per per day, at least four hours per day on average a year. He's in a car. He gets to this arena, and most guys they just stay in the backstage area, relaxing, getting preparing for their for their for their matches. You know, preparing promos and, and like. And where's Ted DiBiase? He's out in the parking lot hosting a tailgate party. I want to go. I would, even if he's not handing out free crap, I would love to just hang with him. Because he's, he's, he's gone from, let's see, he's gone from Randy Orton's bitch in Legacy, although Cody Rhodes was the bigger bitch. To Maurice's to, bitch. Um, to Maurice's bitch. Now he's a man of the people. I'm actually kind of liking wh- where where they won with Ted DiBiase, but again, kinda Michael Cole immediately shitting all over w- what's going on in the ring and out of it. It's like I don't care now. Mute. And then so then he beats. He, so yeah, he pins Slater in like a minute because really, who cares about Slater anymore? Or ever did. Who ever cared about him? The only, yeah. I, I think the most, like, the entire thing with Slater, he immediately lost touch with everybody when John Cena called him the chick from Wendy's. Yeah, when, once you get once you get compared to the Wendy's logo, mm, yeah, you might want to consider reconsider your hairstyle. It's funny, it's funny though, because it's true. Yeah, <laughs> But so, yeah, he, uh, Ted, so, Ted, so, yeah, Ted beats the crap out of out of Heath Slater. Slater wins by losing. <laughs> and immediately and, comes, then, and, immediately and out comes the fate of our fucking existence, Jinder fucking Mahal. Hey, Again. look, hey, look, it's Little Green. I'll paraphrase Spoonie here when talking about Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal with anything. Or, as I prefer to call it, <laughs> Actually, this is what I prefer to call it. I, I don't know what, what it was. What, what. Eggs, I think he's going to say exactly. Um, yeah, well, we were talking about, we, I was making a masturbation joke, and Jinder, so Jinder Mahal, he beats the fuck out of Ted, puts him in the camel clutch, Iron Sheik is weeping somewhere. And not and knowing why. And not knowing why, exactly. So out comes, out comes Teddy Long, the Mac Militant, coming to get it on. Oh, God damn it! I wish Magpie was here, because then he could do the real Teddy Long. Oh, you know what? You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do the real Teddy Long. No. Let me tell you something, player. No. Gender Ball. Okay, no. <laughs> But yeah, so what's hap- what happens is that Teddy Long comes out and he says, Mahal wants to fight so bad, he can take, he has somebody he can take his, his aggression out. And an incredibly ironic statement in considering the match next. He has unfinished business with him for Monday. He'll face this person in a match right now. Out comes 
King Miracle Whip. <laughs> Here's the thing that kills me. What is why does Sheamus have? Un, I guess Mahal has unfinished business with with Sheamus, but does Sheamus give a shit? No. No, it's just some, it's just somebody else. Mahal is a paycheck to him. Yeah, that's basically it's an excuse. No, the to problem kick. the problem is that fucking Sheamus has become the new Kane. Well, you pissed oh, me off, player. So guess what? I know. Yeah, is, yeah. Has, you're absolutely right about that. Yeah, he's new Kane. Yeah, he's no, he's like he's Undertaker. Like JBL, you make me mad, player. You drinking that haterade? So tonight you're gonna face in a tag team match. You and Orlando Kane? Jordan versus the Brothers of Destruction, Kane and the Undertaker. To which the piped in crowd noise goes, yeah. Tag team match. Oh, I must say, actually, by the way, the the, the piped in crowd noise was on display in this show. <laughs> yeah, again, this was another one of those dead crap. Isn't he? Uh, wh- where were they? Were they in? Were they in down in Virginia? No, they were. I maybe. I think maybe it's Virginia the crowds. And I, and I hate to say this, Virginia crowds. Unless you get the right, they're they're ideas, in North Carolina. They're in Raleigh, North Carolina. Were they in, okay, okay. Well, here's yeah, the thing wait, about Southern North Carolina crowds. Is usually a hot crowd. Well, well, don't, well, forget, well don't forget that SmackDown for the last two months has been getting half-filled arenas. So, yeah. But um, Southern, south of Maryland, I've noticed that the crowds can be really dead in that region, unless you got, like, the Hardy Boys or, Rick, or God help me, Ric Flair well, don't, on the well, card. Man, I, well, I, my own little theory for this is that all the Southern crowds were so depressed that WCW died and they didn't have any regular Southern wrestling anymore that whenever WWE comes around, they show their pissed offness to Vince McMahon by not making any noise. <laughs> we'll go and to your show, shows. We'll buy your shit. Yeah. Vince, I'm in the wrestling business. Thank you, Ted. I'm in the entertainment business. Anyways, um... So this match, this match Sam, yeah. another match James made of NA. <laughs> Seamus wins. Moving on. When when hopefully our hope my wish for this Christmas is that Jinder Hall gets fired. <laughs> That's one of the few times you will ever hear somebody, a fan of wrestling, ever actually wish for somebody to get fired that isn't in TNA, or Michael Cole, or Michael Cole, or Kevin Nash. No, no, no. Kevin Nash is gonna is gonna snap both of his quads at TLC and will just quietly go away. The whole no that that whole the whole ladder match the whole hammer above the ring match at TLC it's going to be them trying to climb the ladder they t- they both take one step up both of their quads immediately explode and they spend the entire match writhing around the mat in pain while Michael Cole gets all pissed <laughs> off about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. I get killed. Don't die. Anyway, we are now up to the... We are... After this match, they have a commercial break. We have... We actually... we. This is the segment of the show where they recap 20 minutes of Raw. And it's literally that. Show. It is nothing but a bunch of slammy recaps... And they show more WWE 12 footage. And if I haven't said it enough times already, I don't think I've said it on the show yet. Might have said it yesterday. The graphics in this game are awful. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're are. fucking inexcusable. I've been saying this over and over again, but the graphics in fucking Day of Reckoning 2 on the GameCube are better than the graphics on the PS3 Xbox 360, WWE 12. And you know what? But but guys, but guys, they've got Predator technology. What the fuck is Predator technology? Someone explain to me. It's like regular technology, except with the Predator. Predator technology is the ability for them to interrupt moves more easily. It It is regular technology... Only with Jesse Ventura. Again, wrong. Predator technology is what they're t- uh, naming the ability to interrupt moves uh, pretty much at any time. You're in the ruining match. the joke! No, the joke sucked anyway. Just thought I'd tell you. Don't you run in. Anyway. 
We have another commercial break. Randy Orton and Dolph Randy Orton, Randy Orton, Dolph Ziggler. No, Randy Orton and Zack Ryder versus Dolph Ziggler and Wade Barrett with Vicky Guerrero again. She actually she didn't really make a lot of noise tonight. Can't say I'm a fan of this com- tag team combination. How did the match turn out? It was okay. I mean, okay. None of, none of the matches on SmackDown were particularly great, except for the first match. That was awesome. Uh, this one, it mainly relied on the fact that all four of these guys are hot with the crowd. So, okay. basically, that's, that's really it with this match. I mean, at the, ver- the very end, uh, uh, Orton hits the RKO on uh, Dolph Ziggler. Then, as Orton goes to the pin, Barrett is about to get in the ring, but then Orton gives him the stare of death. And yeah, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. I, I don't need to do anything. You know, go ahead, take the win. That's great. The Barrett Barrage continues. Yeah, Barrett Barrage continues. Yes, he oh. get, yes Randy Orton gives him a Fluttershy stare, and then he leaves. <laughs> For the bronies here. Yep. Really? Yes. I mean... I, I, am dark match, I am the Dark Match's resident brony, goddammit. I know no, you I are. No Tifa. Mega Fighter and Tifa are. Oh, them too. And and Lone Warrior. Yes. Oh, good lord! Can I forget Digibox? He's not a freak. Um, again, going into TLC, when you when you think about it, you know this is the go home show for TLC, and you think, well, Orton got the win, but in tag matches, you can never really tell who's actually going to win. Of the pay per view because it's a tag match. You got four guys in there. Sometimes the, the the guy who gets the momentum wins. Sometimes he loses. In singles matches, we can pretty much tell who's gonna who's got the momentum and who's gonna win. But for the most part, it's a tag match. God only knows who's gonna win. Orton versus Barrett. We all know who's gonna win. Ziggler versus Ryder. Because they've made such a big deal about it. It's going to be the fan. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, we're here. So they, this match happened, okay. and the winners are Randy Orton, Zack Ryder. End of show. It was okay. It was, it was a yeah. decent go-home show. Yeah, it was. Glad to hear that. But um, <laughs> Glad to hear that, because I did not watch it at all. <laughs> but you know what? Um... These things happen. I mean, it it, it 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 it's a good, it's a decent show. So, do we want to do pay per view picks, or are we good? Uh, let's, let's, let's run do, it down. Let's do some pay per view picks. Because we've done this. We've done this for some shows. Okay. So well, let's let's start. let's start up. Let's start up from the bottom up. Uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Zack Ryder for the United States title. It better be Zack Ryder. Um, they might. Yeah, he might uh, win by DQ, but it. But again, it better be. <laughs> Yeah, if they don't put the belt on him now, then he's going to lose a bunch of momentum. But I will yeah, be glad to see him in a much longer match because Dolph's not working twice. Like I, I'm, I'm very happy to see Zack Ryder in a ten minute match. Here's actually here's actually the thing that's kind of worrying is because I don't remember who posted it on the forums, but somebody posted a the uh, match listing to the uh, Madison Square Garden house show they're doing in a couple of weeks uh-huh. and lists. Dolph Ziggler as United States champion. Again. Fine print that, cards sub- subject to change. Part, yeah, but it's still a bit worrying. It is. It really is. Um, next up is the hammer above the ring match, because you can't uh, call it a ladder. Triple H. No, the, the winner of this match is Vince Russo, because he's sitting at home jizzing himself over this. And doesn't oh know Oh, my why. God. They actually used my idea. <laughs> I am marking. Um, okay, out. we got... Uh, Again, I don't really care who wins as long as it's not um, as long as it's not fucking uh, Kevin Nash. Yeah, it's Triple so, you H. Know what? I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll see a lot of very creepy Kevin Nash mad faces, but um, um yeah, I can yeah. see the Randy future. Or- I can Randy. see the future, and if one of these guys doesn't fucking walk out with an injury, I will be shocked. <laughs> sad. Shocked <laughs> and slightly <laughs> sad. Sad. Why can you do it. I will. Um, Cody Rhodes. Point. Next Cody match Rose, we have, uh, 
Cody Rhodes versus Booker T for the Intercontinental title. Cody. Yeah, um, although I would like to see Booker T uh, win it just to shove it in the face of Michael Cole. Yeah, well, if they did that, then and they then they put the belt on Cody that SmackDown. That's gonna be it's gonna be like when they put the put the belt on Cena by be, having him let beat Del Rio two weeks later. And no. Then, and putting the belt on him at Hell in a Cell. There was that would be fucking like, suck. It's gonna it's gonna it would it would kill Cody Rhodes' momentum. Although Cody Rhodes has been pretty damn good at keeping his momentum going, even in the face of uh, of ran, of ran, of, uh, bar- of constant burials by uh, Randy Orton. I wouldn't say they're burials, but even in the face of not defending his title ever, he's yeah, absolutely like the it. the Miz's second reign in, of the U.S. Championship in 2010 until it, it, Brian it gives you, it gives you a clear picture of why of how less of how how little of a shit WWE care, gives about SmackDown. Because when the Intercontinental title was on Raw, it was being defended at every pay-per-view, and it was being fucking blotted as this great fucking thing. And then, on SmackDown, the United States title, that was getting zero attention, that wasn't getting put on pay-per-view. That was, get, that was being traded, that was being defended by Dolph Ziggler against, um, against Kofi Kingston. Constantly. It got yeah. boring. And oh, then, shit, yeah. And then... Next up, and then, then actually, when they when they trade the titles, it's the complete opposite. The to the uh, United States title is getting defended on every pay per view. It's getting fucking promoted. It's getting lauded as this great thing, even though it's not WWE's original belt. It was an NWA belt, which became a WCW belt, which became a WWE belt. It became a WWF belt. Then it became a WWE belt back in right. the invasion. And then, and now, and the Intercontinental title, it's getting. It's the most recognition it's gotten in the last couple of years, really, is when, is right before the draft, when uh, they had the Intercontinental Title Tournament on Raw, and every week uh, William Regal was on the commentary, talking like saying how great the Intercontinental Title was and giving the belt actual prestige. So when CM Punk did win the belt, it meant something. And then all right. of that fucking prestige went away when Rey Mysterio beat JP up for it in 10 seconds at fucking WrestleMania. But that's yeah. what Anyways, um, up next, Mark Henry versus Big Show in a chairs match. Henry. Yeah, Mark's probably going to win. Yeah, I'm, Mark Henry. I'm going to go against the grain and say Big Show. No! Why do you say that? Because I want to be... Because I want to be that guy. Okay, fine. Um, but I just, I, I just got a feeling. I mean, because Mark Henry has not been able to beat Big Show. Now, granted, the vice, the vice versa there is Big Show hasn't been able to beat Mark Henry, but Big Show's been able to get, you know, has been able to get Mark Henry's goat, so to speak. Because if you ever get between Mark Henry and and a live goat that he's determined to eat, um, you'll be joining the goat. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at uh, the direction you took that joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, it, but again, I just got a feeling Big Show's got his number. And um, finally, we have CM Punk versus two guys nobody cares about. No, 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 no. Uh, not not completely don't care about, but it's hard to see them as champion when in the last little while they've just been getting beaten constantly. Yeah, Alberto Del Rio, we all know, is going to go, is is not going to win. Miz may have a chance, but after this Monday, I'm going to go with Punk. No, they've been, they fumbled the ball with Del Rio so badly. They really have, and that is part of why he's got zero momentum going into this match. Yeah, I, I, I really do feel that the whole fumbling of Del Rio's character started when Edge retired. It really did. Yeah. He was supposed to win at WrestleMania, and then they which made Edge win. Should have. Which they made Edge win at they had Edge win at WrestleMania, when, without him at first, firstly without knowing that he was going to retire the next week, and then uh, they beat they have him, him and Christian destroy Del Rio's lowrider not the, not his lowrider his car his pimped out car then. They have him, then he loses to Christian at Extreme Rules, which was a necessity. Because
because it was the feel good moment for Edge. And then then they put him on Raw and he just sort of meandered on Raw doing nothing until he won money in the bank. Then he did more of nothing and then he he beat Cena. Then he lost the belt to Cena two weeks later, so that way they could give Cena his tenth reign. Then he wins the belt back at the very next pay per view. Uh, then he then he beats Cena the next month, not clean, even though it was a last man standing match. It was still it still wasn't clean. Then he loses to CM Punk, and the entire time he was feuding with CM Punk one on one, he was he was you know tapping out and he was crying uncle every week. Yeah. It, yeah was, it's, it was completely not how to book your world champion. Like I've said before, WWE stumbles a lot. They'll stumble into great things, but more often than not, they stumble into Sucky terrible is. things. I mean, look at the Nexus. The, the Nexus angle, that, was, that started amazingly. Them coming out on Raw and literally destroying everything. And, the, and the then next few weeks... Next few weeks they're, you know, they're running Bret Hart over with a vehicle, and they're beating the shit out of announcers and all that one, all that lovely stuff. But then they get in front of John Cena, and since John Cena's the last son of Krypton... <laughs> Again, he, what, I think what happened with the Nexus angle was... Okay, they, we're going out, they come out, they destroy the Raw set, and then Kmart... Or 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 whoever went, hey, that one guy's choking the other guy with his tie. That's not right. You need to do something about that. And at that point, you knew if they were going to fire the most over indie guy who was not named CM Punk, because somebody got offended. I mean, granted, it was a token firing, but. If they were willing to do that, you pretty much figured that the whole Nexus angle was kind of doomed from the get. And, and then they lost at SummerSlam, which okay, guys. totally fucking killed their momentum. And then all that stuff happened, and we've already mentioned it on past shows. Wait, so, Pirate versus Randy Orton. Get back to the fucking predictions. Oh, I don't uh, care. If we were at, we were at the end of the predictions, but actually, something from the from the uh, the forum bettings. Uh, who do you think is going to be the first person to go through a table in a TLC match? Miz. I'm saying Miz. I'm yes. going to say Miz. Yes. I'm going to go against the grain, and I'm going to say Punk. A lot of people have said Punk. No, a lot of people said Roberto Del Rio, but no, I'm saying no, Punk. Cause Del, cause Del, that's only because at last year's TLC, Del Rio, no. he could be obligatory, go over, they'll fall off the 20-foot no, ladder through the table. Here's the thing, guys. Lot. It could be CM Punk. It could be the Miz, but it could also be Del Rio. Think about that. Oh, oh wait, wait. Or how, oh, wait I, have another, I have another thing for that. Ricardo. <laughs> yeah. That actually could right. I need to, that's man, I actually... to mention that to him, actually. I need to mention it to that to put uh, Ricardo on there. Mm. It could be Ricardo. He could be the first guy to go through a table during the CLC match. That's, that's a possibility. It's just so that way they can get him out of the way. Yeah. Anyways, but, um, yeah, did we forget Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett? No, we, I, we mentioned it. Oh, and actually, because one other, one last little big fucking thing about this about TLC. This is going to be the first pay per view since 2007, 2000, 2006, 2007 that they've voluntarily left John Cena off of. I know. And, and, and he's and, not even from all of, from all indications, he's not even going to be shown on the on the show. Yeah, even John even Cena. in a clip. Will only he will only be shown during you know se- segments where they show past TLCs, but that's it. He'll be at home in Boston, ice packs on his shoulders, going. Oh. It, it, it's good for him because he, for all the shit that I've given him and all the shit everyone else has given him, he deserves. He deserves a, a fucking vacation, man. Exactly. He deserves. He deserves the John Morrison treatment of. We'll take you out on TV, come back in, in a couple months. No, except that, you know, Morrison, there's that's iffy because his girlfriend's a fucking psycho. And, and he's, he's not dating Melina, goddammit. He's, no, he's too much of a pussy-whipped idiot to not know that his career is more important than the person he sticks his dick into. And on that note, 
it's time for what gets more screen time than John Morrison. Oh, okay. Yeah. Michael Cole's Slammy gets more screen time than John Morrison. <laughs> uh, uh, Michael Rose Cole's of- Slammy oh. gets more screen time than John Morrison. He already said that one. No, we didn't. We didn't say I it twice. I just said it! <laughs> Rosa Mendez's amazingly, amazingly, amazingly tight, short, leather pants get more screen time than John Morris. Um, um, Michael Cole Slammy gets more screen time. <laughs> The fact that we didn't mention that why jo- why Michael Cole had a third slam, he gets more screen time than John Moore. <laughs> got it. Got it. In he got it in a supplemental online slammy. That's they didn't like actually saying, mention it. They they gave him a slammy for loud mouth of the year. Is is that really what they gave it for him? I think so. I don't know. I don't want to go over to check on uh, on WWE.com because that's where you only find it out. It's like. You know, it's like getting the Grammy or an Oscar before the telecast even starts. Yeah. Nobody fucking cares. Well, th- well, there's like 80 fucking Grammy c- categories, and they only give it to, you know, fucking Justin Bieber and Kelly Clarkson. But Clark. again, I'm telling you, if you don't get it on the, on, the actual, uh, on the actual telecast, you're not worth a damn. And on that note... Okay, I'm now, one, one, hold on. I'm sorry, Iron Bright. I, I hate to run in and stop you. Justin Bieber has never, run a, has never won a Grammy. Shut your mouth. They're going to. You can tell. They're going to do it. No, they won't. Shut your they face. Do, People give a shit about the matches. fucking Grammys. <laughs> Stay tuned for oh. Dark Matches impromptu Grammy prediction, show. Oh. <laughs> And on oh. that off show, I know what to say in. after the show in our in a new Dark Match show called Dark Match when the lights go out. And on that off show, we must end. I'm No Leaf Clover, and I'm Iron Bite. I'm Christopher says. I'm the fat one, Subric. See ya. Go do something productive, please. Good, good night, night and good luck. Play that theme music. No, it's da 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 da